<laughs> my point simply being is, is that is that it's really hard uh, to get on the social social media and uh, and not get somewhat overwhelmed by it uh, by, by what's been going on um, to, to put it lightly and, and this is the one thought that I, I kept having is you know at, things have gotten shaken up uh, the, the, America's been shaken up the world's been shaken up a matter of fact, uh, because of the being shaken up, so much has been shut down. And, and, and people don't know. I mean, you keep hearing people like, is this the apocalypse? Is this the end of times? Is this this? Is this that? And, and it may be a lot of things, but this much I know is, is that God's got a lot for us to get done yet. And, and, uh, and, and so uh, we need to, per se, quit listening to all the negative but go over to Luke chapter 8. I'm, I'm going to get in this. <clears throat> I've, got, I've got a couple of objectives today in my message. Because first of all, we are still going to talk about the kingdom of God. Because uh, that's what we've been talking about. But we're a little bit shifted. Because I, I, one, I think it was Friday. Uh, we came back to the room and I pulled out a pad of paper. Because I had some things working in me. And I, and I thought I'd just start writing. And within literally five minutes, I had my outline. <clears throat> and I was like... Okay, I thought it was going to be more than that. And that it was done. It was done. And, and so I, I knew exactly what I was going to share with you all. But first of all, there's been plenty of bad news. So we're not going to give you any bad news. No bad news this morning, okay? Second of all, there's been plenty of opinions. So I'm not going to give you any opinions. I've got thoughts. i got, I got, I got thoughts. I've, I've been, I was praying this morning a little bit uh, before... Before I was studying, and I've got opinions. I've got opinions on on the the, the virus, the coronavirus. I I got opinions on uh, on all this kind of stuff. But I'm not going to give you my opinions. I'm going to give you what the Word of God says, Amen. which is truth, Amen. and the truth is what's going to make you free if you know it. And and and, uh, and so I'm gonna, that, that's what I'm going to focus on here. Um, and and uh, so anyway. Uh, so our springboard verse over much of this series has been Luke chapter 8, verse 9, where it says the disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? And he said, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might see and hearing they may not, may not understand, may, may not see and may not understand. But that one phrase in there where it says, it is given for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. In other words, again, mysteries are not things that you are never going to know. I, I, that, that's, it seems like a lot of TV shows now are about the mysteries. About I mean, it used to be uh, Sherlock Holmes and Agatha Christie. Those uh, you know, We'd read the books of Nancy Drew and... Uh, the Hardy Boys, right? We, we read them because those were the those were the mysteries, and now we've got them on TV like every night. Where where who who did this murder? Who killed this person? And then you have to find, and it's a mystery. But then they have to dig in. Amen. That's what it says about the treasure. Remember, the man was digging in the yard, digging in the field, and found the treasure. And it was because he dug that he found the treasure. And so that's what the mystery is, is, is that it's something that you've got to dig into. And when you find it, you're willing to sell everything you have for it. So, uh, so, so it's a mystery, but God says, I want you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, you've got to dig. Don't be surprised when the world is taken aback and shaken up by what's going on. Just don't let it be you. Because you live, you are, you are a part of a different kingdom. Amen. And I'll, I'll get more into that, hopefully, as we go along. God wants us to understand the kingdom of God, how it operates, and how we operate in it. So again today, I'm not going to give you my, uh, my opinion. I'm going to give you the truth. And I'm not, I'm not going to put any negative. I'm going to put positive in it because it's time that we have some positivity in our threads. Amen. 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 Go to Hebrews 12. Now I'm going to work my, I, I've got to get through this because I don't want this to be a series. 
And sometimes if I, if I teach too much, which it's kind of who I am, if I teach too much, then, I, uh, then things become serious. And I want this to be serious. This is just something the Holy Spirit has in my heart for today. I don't, uh, it, we've been, we've been kind, of kind of bombarded with this stuff all week. And so I want, um, and I haven't posted a lot on, I haven't posted at all on anything. Because, again, I, I want to hear what the Holy Spirit has. And I'm going to, I want you guys to be the first ones to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. And, um, but in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, it says, wherefore, we receiving a kingdom. All right, so now this is talking about kingdom. That's why I told you, we're, we're still talking about kingdom here this morning. This says, wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Now, let's read that out of the New Living Translation. It says, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable. The news of the coronavirus and COVID-19 shook us up, has shaken everybody up, has made us nervous. But he said, we are a kingdom that is unshakable. So let us be thankful, please God, by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. So when everything is being shaken around us, we are a part of the kingdom that's not shaken. Now, just to give you a quick illustration of this, we're in this world, we're not of this world. If you go to a, uh, uh, Bill Winston used the illustration, I believe it's Haiti that he went down to and visited and, and was doing some ministry work. And, and they were walking through the, the, the destitute, the poorest of the poor, and they turned a corner and there is a building that is totally out of place. It is a beautiful building. It is, it is. It is just immaculate and wonderful. And he's going, who lives there? And they said, that's the American embassy. And it hit him like a ton of bricks <clears throat> that even though the, the, the ambassador, the people that worked there were, were in the poverty of, of that country, they didn't have to participate in it because they were of a different kingdom they had a different. They had a different financial system that 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 covered them, and so there was a whole lot of shaking going on all around them. But in their embassy, from a different kingdom, they operated in a different way. And so that's what it's saying here. It's saying that. It's saying that we have. Uh, Chimes. It's saying that even though there's a lot of shaking in the world, in the world system, it does not have to come nigh to you. Amen. It, doesn't have to mess, it doesn't have to mess with you. That we're of a different kingdom and the kingdom that we're from never is, sh is never shaken. Say that with me. Never shaken. Never, never shaken. Never shaken. Never shaken. Amen. 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 Go to Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33, verse 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord, is his treasure. I'm going to read that out of the Amplified Version. And there shall be stability in your times. Say that with me. Say there's stability in my times. There's stability in my times. Say, no matter what's going on, no what's going on there's, stability there's stability in my time. Because of wisdom, of wisdom and, knowledge. and knowledge. Stability in your times and abundance of salvation, wisdom, knowledge, and reverent fear and worship of the Lord is your treasure and His. Again, we don't... Shaking, a whole lot of shaking. Not in this kingdom. This kingdom is a steadfast kingdom. And walking in wisdom and walking in knowledge of God's kingdom brings you stability, even while everybody else is shaking. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Hallelujah. Praise the 
Praise God. Matthew 7, verse 24. We know this portion of scripture, but it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. So this goes back to what we just read in Isaiah about knowledge and, and wisdom. So you're hearing what the word of God says. You're doing them. In other words, you're operating his system, his kingdom. So if you hear the saying of mine and do with them, I will liken, unto, liken him unto a wise man which builds his house upon the rock. The rain descends, the floods come, the winds blow, beats upon that house. And guess what? It's not shaken. It falls not. It fell not. For it was founded upon the rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doesn't do them shall be likened unto a foolish man, which builds his, builds his house upon the sand. And the rains descends, floods come, winds blow, beats upon that house, and it fell. It shook. It crumbled. And great was the fall of it. So again, we're seeing the same principle here. That the kingdom of God is an unshakable kingdom. That when you build your life in the word of God and on his system and on his, on his ways of thinking. Beloved, there can be a lot of shaking going on around you. And, and I, again, I mentioned in the offering, I was going to say this then. But a simple, uh, a simple way to understand this is when we talk about seed. The kingdom of God, the system operating is seed time and harvest. So when, so when there becomes a shaking, which there currently has been, when there becomes a shaking in the economy or a shaking where other people's jobs are being influenced by, uh, by the, the, the bad or by what's going on around them, your seed declares your harvest. Amen. Your seed declares how you live. And everybody else may be living, uh, living uh, uncertain, but you can live certain because you've got tithe, open windows, and you've got a seed which declares a harvest. And again, I'm not going to turn there, but Ecclesiastes chapter 11, it says that you don't know what's coming down the road, so you need to be sowing seed. It, 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 to, to, you know, if you've sown to seven, sow to eight. Keep sowing. Don't stop sowing. Because your seed is for an appointed time of harvest. Amen. So again, that's what we're saying here. Is there could be shaking going on all over the place. But you don't have to be shaken if you're operating in the kingdom of God. Now, as I sat in my hotel room and chilling and reading tweets and posts on social media, I sat back and uh, just in the silence of the room and... Uh, just, just spoke in tongues to myself and just meditated on, on things. And, um, and, and again, today, the Holy Spirit just gave me five simple things. And I don't always deal in the, the fives or the points. But he gave me five pieces of good news for us. There's been a lot of things taken away. Uh, there's, uh, you know, the, the March Madness has been taken away, replaced by March Madness. <laughs> a different kind of March Madness. Uh, so, so, so there's been a lot of things taken away, but I want to tell you some, some stuff that you still have. Amen. Amen. Now, again, these are not, this is an unexhaustive list. As I sat there, these are just things the Holy Spirit placed in my heart. And, uh, and I just, I wrote them down. And again, we could, we could take some time after this and go, what else do we have? And you guys could fill it in. Where, where, uh, but these are things God wants you to know that we have still today. Government can't take this away from you. Uh, your employer can't take this away from you. We still have these things. Amen. So first of all, and I, I'll just, I'm going to say it like this, uh, that you have faith. Now I'm saying this. As a positive way, because I said I don't want to be negative at all. So to say anything negative, like don't do this, would be a little bit negative. So what I'm saying is that you have faith, which means you can't live in fear. Amen. I was going to say just don't live in fear, but I just want to simply tell you what you have. Amen. You have faith, so don't you can't live in fear. Fear not. 95 times in the word of God, which tells me it's got to be. A, a major point that God wants to get across to his kids. God was constantly telling his people not to fear. 
no matter what they're facing. The, matter of fact, the bigger giant they're facing, the more he'd say, remember not to fear. Joshua was getting ready to go into the promised land and lead uh, uh, several million Jews into the promised land. And God says, don't fear. <laughs> don't fear. Why? Because when you look at what's going on around you, when you look, the, 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 in, in, in uh, Joshua, they come up, they come up to the Jordan River, gushing by. It's, a, it's at the deepest point that it's at all year long because it's harvest time and is rushing stronger than it's ever rushed. And, and, and they're looking at that and they could have easily went, okay, I'm freaking out. But God said, fear not. They cross it. They get to the other side. And they look up there and they see a fortified wall of Jericho. And they see that, and again, fortified walls weren't just the, weren't, weren't their only protection. If you've ever watched um, Veggie Tales, you know they had. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know that they had they had the weapons posted around. You, you you didn't just sit there and go just try to get in. You know you can't get in. They had the weapons. so they looked up there and they saw all these people at, ready to to strike and to go against them. <coughs> going too hard today. They, 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 they saw, and, and, and they're looking at this wall. And if you've ever seen it on it, where Jericho was, there was a slope that went up to it and then it sat on the slope. So it wasn't like it was some easy access point. It wasn't like they had a walking track that went around the edge of it. But they looked at that and their first thought was like, how are we going to do this? And God said, fear. He was constantly telling him, don't fear, don't do it. And yet, when we are faced with stuff, our, our temptation is to immediately fear. You understand that the, that the, the keys to victory let me say it this way. Their method of victory may, may have changed from battle to battle. The, the one where uh, Moses raised his hands. We see other ones where they were led by musicians and, 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 and the horns. And we see, we see David going out with a slingshot. The method that God chose may have changed. But his word remained the same. Fear not. A.W. Tozer saw this on, on uh, from Butch Vanderpool, posted this today. A.W. Tozer said, a scared world needs to see a fearless church. Amen. The reason we're not having church tonight isn't out of fear. Amen. The reason we're having church tonight is to somewhat go hand in hand with what the government wants us to do. It's just wisdom on that. Right. But we're having church this morning. We'll probably have church Wednesday. And again, I don't want anybody ever to say, close to that, I feel, I feel pressure to come to church. Uh, no, no. Again, I'm going to do my best to post these. But fear is something that will remove you from God's blessings. Galatians tells us that we've been given fear as part of the fruit of the Spirit, that it's uh, given faith, faith as the fruit of the Spirit, that's something that we have to mature. It's interesting to me that some Christians have, have allowed faith in the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith. They've removed faith and made it faithfulness. And, and they're going to do that because that's a fruit. That's something that can be that can come out. But that's not the Greek word for it. The Greek word that's used in the fruit of the Spirit is pistis, which means faith. The fruit of the Spirit is faith. Now, yeah, I, I, I could preach on this and say there's faithfulness in faith. But beloved, to every man, woman and child, 
is given a measure of faith. The question is, what are you doing with it? Unfortunately, as we've gone through this, this, this week, these last couple of weeks, most Christians have set their faith on the shelf somewhere and are, and are panicking and stocking up on toilet paper instead of stocking up on the Word of God. I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> it's, we, we, we've got to make sure that we take that faith and mature it and work it. Because if you don't work faith, beloved, then fear will work. Faith and fear cannot operate at the same time. Matter of fact, fear is faith for the negative. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. You might know this one. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Amen. Of love. And, and notice this, and of a sound mind. And I love that. Because you cannot operate in fear and have a sound mind at the same time. And, and again, I can just hear people's thought patterns of this going, well, no, no. You, you, it's, and, and, and some people will say, I'm just respecting it. I, I, okay, I get that. But you cannot, if you've got fear, if you've got, fear cannot work in a sound mind. They, they, they go contrary. And again, I, I think we've heard, we've, we've heard the, the, the acronym, false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know. It, but again, when, when you're operating under fear, you're operating based on believing that the negative is true. Where faith says God's word is true. We know Job, the reason for his downfall was the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. People are like, no, God wanted him to have it done. No, God didn't want him to have it done. It's just that he had fear. He let fear in and it gave the enemy access to everything. Are you hearing me? You may be like, no, I'm a mighty man of God. I'm a mighty man. And you start letting fear get into you with this virus. And I'm not standing up here going, uh, you know, that I'm gonna, we're going to have a prayer line today and I'm going to cough in everybody's face just to prove that we have faith. <laughs> well, no, that's silly stuff. But what I'm saying is, beloved, we have a protection around us. Amen. It is our refuge. He is our strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And so again, my point is, is that if all you're doing is reading your, your social media feeds or getting on the internet or watching CNN or Fox or, or MSNBC or whatever you're watching on TV, if that's all you're watching, then beloved, faith cometh by hearing and so does fear. Mm -hmm. Have you ever caught, caught yourself in one of those bunny trails where, where you're listening to this and listening to this and listening to this and by the time you're done, you're going, oh Lord. Get caught in the other kind of bunny trail. Start listening to men of God on, 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 on your uh, social feeds. Start, start listening to men of God. Go, go to the, hunt them down. Go on to Keith Moore, to, to Bill Winston's, to Keith, Kenneth Copeland's, to Jerry Savelle's. Go on there, start reading their posts. Well, they don't know what's going on with the coronavirus, but they know what's going on in the kingdom of God. Amen. Most of them have these areas of devotionals. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have to answer it. Don't have to nod your head or anything. Just sit perfectly still so I have no idea, okay? I want you to think this week. Now, again, most, some of you might be good on this. 
But, but by nodding your head, it might make the person next to you feel bad. <laughs> this week, how many articles did you read? Things did you read on the coronavirus or something on that order versus how many articles did you read on the word of God? Uh, do you follow me what I'm saying? You, you went down and you saw, you saw uh, coronavirus, what it's doing in Italy. One doctor speaks out and click on it. What, is, what it did in, in China. What it's doing here. What you need to do to, what you need to, <laughs> what you need to do to protect yourself from the uh, corona. <laughs> How many of you went over after that and read four articles on our good God, Amen. on dealing with fear, mm -hmm. on how God loves you, on God our healer. Mm -hmm. See, you're feeding something. You're feeding something. Right. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Mm -hmm. Now again, I'm just going to simply say this. Uh, what you hear is what you're gonna is what you're gonna build. Hallelujah. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't gonna say this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go here. I'm spending more time at this point. The rest of them won't be this in depth. But um, how do we boost our faith and, and make our faith that active again? What you're listening to, what you're what you're bringing in. But Mark 11 tells us that whatever you say with your mouth, you'll have whatever you say. Beloved, uh, Bill, Bill Winston made a statement. Um, and again, I just, I just was, I fed on this. I went, I went to, um, I went to Mark Hankins' uh, side and, and, uh, and started reading through just things that he said, just quotes. With Bill Winston, and that, and, and one of the things Bill Winston said, he said, "Fear will make you say things you never thought you'd say." Mm -hmm. You start, you, you start hearing, you keep hearing about the coronavirus, you keep hearing about what's going on, you keep hearing what these doctors saying, this doctor saying, and you'll you'll have words come out of your mouth that you never thought would come out of your mouth. Why? Because that's what you're feeding. Mark Hankins said, said it like this. He said, your faith has to be strong enough to move your mouth before it'll be strong enough to move your mountain. Mm -hmm. That'd be a great line to say at the end of the message, drop the microphone, walk out, get in the car, and just drive home. Leave other people sitting there mm -hmm. in, the, in the sanctuary. You know, they're going, where'd Pastor go? I don't know. He's got, he, he just left. Why did he leave? Your faith has to be strong enough to move your mouth before it'll be strong enough to move your mouth. Amen. Another thing that we need to focus on to keep building our faith or to manifest our faith, to show our faith, is, um, is praise. And I'm not going to go through all these. These are just a couple things the Holy Spirit showed to me. But praise. Fear will get you sad. Praise will get you glad. Could you, could you feel this morning as we kept getting deeper into praise and worship, just the joy of the Lord and the excitement and the, the shouting? <laughs> you know, because we just kept building. It kept, the more we got in praise and worship, the gladder we got. Fear will make you sad. It'll bring this oppression on you. There's some times when we're sitting in the, in the hotel room this week, just, just and we're going through, and I'm reading this person and this person and this person and this person and this person. And finally, I had to go, all right, <laughs> good. put that away. I'll stare at the ceiling because it's more edifying than everything I'm reading. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. The praise will do that. Now here, listen to this. Here's what praise is. You ready for, ready for this? 
praise is this. Look how big it is. We sang songs this morning. Look how big God is. We sang, I got joy down in my soul. I've got a peace that I won't let go. Why? Because we were looking at how big God was. And we were singing praises and rejoicing. We were singing songs like, oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic. No, we didn't sing that song, but the majestic. The heavens declare your greatness. The oceans cry out to you. Look how big our God is. That's what praise to God looks like. Fear praises too. You don't understand how big this thing is. You don't understand what would happen. You don't understand. Look how big it is. Look how big it's taken over. Look how big... Technically, it is a pandemic. There's, there's nothing. People go, how do they call it that? They call it that because it qualifies. 100 countries and 100,000 people have been infected with it. Not died. It has nothing to do with deaths. It's just how many people have been. So it qualifies. But we sit there and go, look at that name. It's a pandemic. Oh, no. I, I, you'll like my next point. Or one of my next points. Because that's just a name. Mm -hmm. But when you sit there going, look how big it is. Look how many countries. Look how many people. Look at Italy. Look at China. Look at Germany. Look at, look at Europe. Look at, look, look at America. Beloved, you might as well be going. Praise coronavirus because again that's what praise is praise is a declaration of how big how, how great it is and if you've got fear of something you are glorifying it and the devil's getting all the glory come magnify the Lord with me I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say that, again, my last four points are quick-ish. <laughs> I, I, we were talking about this last week at the, at the minister's conference. And the picture I got, because again, come magnify the Lord with me. How, how many understand that God doesn't get bigger? Right. He's the same yesterday, today, and for, forever. There's nothing you can do to make him bigger, except you can... He can seem bigger to you. And, and, and I, someone, had, I think dad said something like that. And it brought back a memory as a kid. We lived on the east side of the Mississippi River. Where St. Louis, and, and well, we always did because we lived in Illinois. So we were, and, and we lived, there was a while we lived right on, on, on the Illinois side. And then there was another time we lived in the state a little bit. But we took a lot of, because my, pa my parents were Cardinal fans. I still loved them, even though they weren't Cubs fans. But, um, but we'd, we'd get on that trek to go to St. Louis. And what's St. Louis known for besides the arch, the arch right? And so my sisters and I would sit in the back seat of the car, as opposed to the hood. And we sit in the back seat of the car. And we had a contest. Who would be the first person to see the arch? You've gone to the St. Louis a lot, haven't you? I used to live in St. Louis. St. Louis. So you know, you know that you can see the arch from quite a ways away from there. And, it, and, 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 and the reason it was such a, a trick was because of all the trees and the hills and all that kind of stuff. And from a distance, from miles away, it would just seem like this little bit of thing. It'd just be this little thing. You could sit there and you could go, and it'd be gone. And we would sit there, we'd look, we'd be, because we didn't know where it was, you know, the roads go like this, so it could be on this side, that side. We would look at, and then all of a sudden, said, I see it! But it was so small. How many know that the arch was still the same size? Mm -hmm. We were just really far away from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Good example. Amen. 
And so as we drove, it became more apparent to us. And as we got closer, it became more real to us. And then we'd get downtown St. Louis. No, it ain't covering it anymore. It wouldn't even cover a fragment of it with that thumb anymore. Because we are right on top of it. Right in the midst of it. Beloved, if you're having trouble with the coronavirus or anything in this world looking too big, it's because you've put yourself too close to it and not close to God. Right. And I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying you're not born again. I'm not saying you're not on the right road. I'm just saying you need to get moving in more towards him and come magnify the Lord with me. Amen. Amen. So number one, beloved, we have faith, and the faith can't be taken away. This world can't take it away. Amen. We have faith. Number three. Two. Yeah, I just, you know, I told you to go quick. I didn't tell you I was going to skip things. No. Number two, we have each other. Amen. I had to throw this in here. And again, I've already talked about it a little bit today, but it's fascinating to me that the first thing that our governor said we need to cut out and stay away from, the first thing, the first time he spoke, he said, you need to stay out of church. Cancel church services. Before he said anything about we need to get rid of the boys' sweet 16, the girls' sweet 16, didn't even talk about that. He said, you need to just don't go to church. Beloved, do you understand that Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 doesn't say that we need to not forsake the assembling itself together as a matter of some is? He didn't put that in there just to give us some bum news for our weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, folks. You got to go to church. Sorry to ruin your day. Sorry to ruin your weekend, but you got to go to church. He didn't do that for that. He knew that we needed one another. Amen. Proverbs tell us, tells us iron sharpens iron. Do you understand? Do you know what Genesis chapter 2 says? It's not good that a man be alone. Pastor Dad, that's talking about a man and his helpmate. In context, yeah, but in statement, he said it's not good that a man is alone. And then he spent the rest, he spent the rest of the word of God telling us we need one another. Why? Because it's not good that men be alone, that you be alone. And again, I'm not saying that we sit in each other's face and cough and hack and all this. I'm not saying that we don't do, take maybe some precautions to be smart about it. <clears throat> but beloved, in a, in a situation where the enemy is, we, are, we know we're in the last of the last days. God, it makes sense that the enemy is saying, you don't go to church. Don't go to church. We're just, we want you to be safe. And the devil's going, yeah, we want you to be safe. I can hear John Lovitz saying, yeah, we want you to be safe. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Remember when he used to play the devil? <clears throat> but it's amazing, beloved, that when we go through trials, the first thing we want to do is stay home from church. Mm -hmm. oh, I just need some extra rest. So I'm going to stay home from church. Never thought about staying home from work, did you? <laughs> now, some of you are going, yeah, I thought about staying home from work. <laughs> Most people, if they stay home from work, they're like, well, I can't go to church now because I stay home from work. Beloved, we need one another. When you're, when you're going through a battle, you need to be around people. Now, again, I understand that if there's contagions or whatever that, that you need to uh, be smart but God created us to be social people now tonight we're not we're, we're not going to meet here tonight but you know what would be smart is for each of us to pick up our phones and perhaps send some texts out to some people. Mm -hmm. Call somebody. Say, I just want to tell you, I love you. Don't let, don't let anything separate you from the beloved. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Matter of fact, we should, we should, what, what does it say in Hebrews 11? Even more as you see the day approaching. You need to show up together even more as you see the day approaching. I'm not going to read these, but Ecclesiastes chapter 4, you can read it when you get home. But it talks about, you know, that, that we need one another to, uh, to just do things, be more effective. Job, Job 42, verse 10. It says, the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When? When he prayed for his friends. Is He didn't turn the captivity of Job when Job said, I'm going to stay at home and I'm just going to pray for my knees. It's when he got his eyes off of himself and put it on others that the captivity was turned. Mm -hmm. Don't let this thing separate you. Because, beloved, whether you like it or not, you're stuck with me. <laughs> you're stuck with the people around you. And you've got one another. We've got one another. Amen? That's why I told you earlier. If you're in a, bond, a bind, if you're in a situation where, where this whole thing maybe has messed with your work or whatever, don't hesitate. You say, but that wouldn't be faith, Pastor Thad. If you need help, you talk to me. And I, what, what, if I can do something, I'll do it. If I can't, I'll, I'll ask. I'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk to some people and see what we can do. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Number three. Okay, so we have faith. We have one another. We have authority. Amen. Now, this is what we've been on, so I don't need to just say it a lot, but we have authority. The, 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 uh, Luke, go to Luke 9. Luke 9. Hallelujah. I'll wrap this thing up fairly quickly. Praise God. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Again, this, this has been where we've started off the last several weeks. But it says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over most of the devils, oh. over all devils, and to cure what? Diseases. diseases. He gave the 12 the power and authority to cure diseases. Huh. Go, flip, go to uh, Luke 10. And here in, in verse 1, he says he sent out the 70 to do the same stuff. And in verse 17, it says, And the 70 returned again with joy, because they must have been praising, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. Subject to who? Us. Us. And Jesus said, yeah, I saw Satan fall from lightning. I saw from, so, Satan fell like lightning from heaven. I, I got it right. Which tells me he's been D. Thrown. Deactivated. Jesse and I came in here last night and we were spraying down the chairs to disinfect it. The devil's been disinfected. Mm -hmm. Amen. He is squirmed. He has no authority, no power. That's what Jesus said. I saw him fall like heaven. He has no authority left. He has been placed under our feet. He and his weapons are not to be scary. Amen. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Say all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. Say I've been, I've been given authority to trample over all power, to trample power, over all power of, the enemy. of the enemy. All power of the enemy. All power of the enemy. I trample on. I trample on. I've got authority over. I've got authority. All power of the enemy. All power of the enemy. And it doesn't stop there. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I think I would be wrong if I didn't have us say that together. Say, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. 
nothing will hurt me by any means. Because I have authority over the devil, his imps, his wimps, his pimps. They have no say in me. But I have a say for them. Nothing, Nothing. shall by any means hurt you. We have authority over the curse. We've been redeemed from the curse. And can I just read this one? Deuteronomy 28, verse 60. This is brand new. This isn't new. You understand the coronavirus isn't new? Right. Amen. There's a strain of it that's new. I do find it interesting. Nurse, do, do they have different names for all the flus that keep... Changing strains. Different strains, yeah. Okay. It's funny how the we, we treat the coronavirus like this is something so brand new. And it's just changed the strand. That's COVID nineteen means two thousand nineteen is when it was when it was it came about. But it's been around for a long time. There's other there's been other strains of it. And they just have a name. They just put a name on it. And 19, it's just new. We're like, oh, we've never seen this thing, but we've seen things before. It's been floating around long before. But we look at it and it goes, this is brand new. The Bible didn't see this coming. Deuteronomy 28, verse 60. This, this curse, this, he's going to live under the curse, we'll live under the blessing. We've been redeemed from the curse. Moreover, he will bring upon thee the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cling to thee. The diseases of the world. If you're under the curse, what the world participates in, you get to participate in. And they'll cleave to you. We love you. Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of the law, then the Lord will allow to come upon you till you destroy it. We're redeemed from the curse. Amen. We have authority over the curse. If the curse starts knocking at your door, you have the authority to say, don't want none, get out of here. Amen. You can't do that, Pastor Dad. You're just spying the sky thinking right there. I'm just telling you what the truth says. Amen. All right, number four. So, we have faith. We have each other. We have authority. Number four, we have a name. And I, I, want, I, I started teasing with that last part because remember in Luke 10, verse 17, which we might still be right there. It says the 70 returned again with joy saying the devils are subject to us because we have a name. Because we have a name that is above all names. Go to Philippians 2. We have a name that is above all names. We have a name that, that at the sound of that name, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Woo! That that name wins. <laughs> every knee. Every knee. Say, say, say with me. Say, every knee shall bow. Every, every, knee shall bow. Shall bow. every tongue will confess. Every tongue will confess. That, that, that name wins. wins. So as long as you're operating in that name, guess what? You win. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought of not robbery to be equal with God. Now again, I'm not going to teach all this stuff. This is, a, this is so much good. All of it. He made of himself no reputation. Took on himself the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. Even death on the cross. Wherefore. God also highly exalted him. And gave him the name. Which is above. Every name. Coronavirus. Da, 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 da. <laughs> COVID-19. Da, 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 da. What will we do? Jeez. And now I'm not, I'm not. Jesus. You know, it's okay if they gave it the name. It's okay to know the names. Cancer, lymphoma, leukemia, those are names. Diabetes, 
You got other stuff that, that, that the enemy has tried to throw on you? They all have these scientific names. And it's good that they have names. Because we have a name that's above that name. The name of Jesus is above the name coronavirus. In Jesus' name, you cannot cross this doorpost. This blood that's been placed over my life, you cannot cross it. COVID-19 is a name. And we've been given a name that's above that name. They have to bow. I want to throw one more at you here. You ready? Number five, we have promises. And before I get into the promises specifically, I want to say this. We're not talking about just promises, promises. <laughs> God's not a man that he should lie. Which means when you're dealing with promises from a man, eh, hopefully it comes back. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about a blood sworn oath. A covenant promise. A promise that is sealed with the blood of Jesus. It's the one where it says in Hebrew, the handwriting of ordinance against us has been wiped away. It's the blood. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It's power. It's the blood. When I say we have a promise, I'm saying we have a blood sworn oath from Almighty God that if He has spoken it, that settles it. We, we've, we've heard people say, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Beloved, God said it, that settles it. That puts it in, in the mark. Jerry Savelle said, um, when God makes a promise, he puts the entire corporate structure of heaven on the line. God said it, that settles it. Whether you believe it or not, whether you put faith in it or not, whether you take it to yourself or not, dep depends on whether it settles it for you. You ready for some stuff here? John, you got to be ready for that clicker right there. Exodus 23, 25. I'm just going to tell you some promises if that's okay with you. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread, thy water, and I will take sickness far from the midst of thee. Say, so I have a promise. I have a promise. That God has taken. That God has taken sickness, sickness far from the midst of me. Far from the midst of me. Go to Isaiah 54. Verse 17. Some weapons. Oh, so no weapon. All right. Okay. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment shall, uh, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of all y'all. <laughs> of the servants of the Lord and the righteousnesses of me, says the Lord. Say it with me. I have a promise. I have a promise. No weapon formed against me. No weapon formed against me. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. That's, my heritage. That's my heritage. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. No weapon. No weapon. Shall prosper against me. Shall prosper against me. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Remember I said faith comes by hearing the word. By speaking the word. That's why I'm, That's why we're doing what we're doing this morning. Hallelujah. I sometimes do that. But I don't usually do it to this level. But we need, we need to be rebooting ourselves here this morning. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1. Says my son... Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days 
long life and peace shall be added to thee. Amen. Shall be added to thee. Say, I have a promise. I have a promise. For a length of days, long life, and peace, and they're added to me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How about Psalm 23? I couldn't just pick one on Psalm 23. There's some of it we'll repeat here, but the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, you don't have to repeat it with me. But I appreciate that. Well, we'll repeat in a second, okay? I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in his word and green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters of the spirit of God. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But does this not apply to today? I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Your rod, which is your word, and your staff, which is your Holy Spirit, will comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the midst of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Goodness and mercy hunt me down to pursue after me. Because they want to slap me upside the head one way with goodness. Slap me upside the head the, head the other way with mercy. They want to give me mercy noogies. <laughs> So I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Say it with me. Say, there may be death around me. There may be death around me. But I'll fear no evil. But I'll fear no evil. Because I have his word. Because I have his word. I have his Holy Spirit. I have his Holy Spirit. And they sustain me. And they sustain me. And they give me victory. And they give me victory. Hallelujah. I'm not hunted down by the coronavirus. I'm not hunted down by the coronavirus. I'm hunted, down by I'm hunted down by goodness and mercy, and, mercy. and they can have their way with me. Say, say, hey goodness, hey, goodness. hey, goodness. hey, mercy. hey mercy, slap me silly, slap me. <laughs> have your way with me. Have your way with me. Amen. How about a good old Psalm 103, Doc? I thought you might be preaching my message. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord and beloved, beloved, in the midst of all the articles, in the midst of the news stories, forget not my benefits. Amen. Who forgives your iniquities. Heals most of your diseases. All, all your diseases. Yeah. Good catch. He heals all of your diseases. And he redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth. With good things. So that your youth is renewed. By the eagles. Say, I. I. No, I said, I. I. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Will not forget, Will not forget any, of any of his benefits. My iniquities, My iniquities have, been forgiven. have been forgiven. All diseases, All diseases I, have been healed from. I have been healed from. He's redeemed my life, He's redeemed my life from destruction. From destruction. Therefore, Therefore, loving kindness, loving kindness and, tender mercies and tender mercies are all over me. Are all over me. Ooh, they're all over me. All over From the top of my head, to the, the soles of my feet, and everywhere in between, everywhere in between. Tender, mercies tender mercies and loving kindness, loving kindness are, all are all around me. My mouth, my mouth only satisfied with good things. So I bless the Lord. So I bless the Lord. Ooh, I bless the Lord. Can we just take a second and bless the Lord? I know we're coming up on the end here. I only got one more scripture left. But I just want to bless the Lord. Oh, I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Father, Lord, that we don't have to live under fear. But we have these promises. We have these ever-precious 
good and perfect promises. Oh, for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John turned to Psalm 91. Uh, mark it in the Passion Translation. I think it's the TPT. Hallelujah. TP. PT. Uh -huh. yeah. Toilet paper translation. <laughs> so, so. Uh, we're we're going to close tonight uh, with, uh, this morning, um, with, uh, with, with reading this together. Okay. So stay, stay in rhythm with us. And um, we'll just, we'll follow John up there on the, um, on where I just like the way uh, the Passion Translation reads it. Uh, but I want us all to read it, this one. Read it all at the same time. Amen. And, 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 we're, and we're, this is going to be our close. But th this is just to, to finish the promises of God. And nothing says it better than Psalm 91, does it? Okay, let's read it together. When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me the only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy and he will protect you from false accusations and any deadly curse. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. You will never worry about an attack of the demonic forces at night, nor have fear of a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil launched against you. Even in a time of disaster, with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscathed and unharmed. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment, for they will be paid back for what they have done. When we live our lives within the shadow of God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us? God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me, as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray, and you will find and feel my presence, even in your time of pressure and trouble. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. You will be satisfied with a full life, and with all that I do for you, for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And we thank you, Father, that your word is the gospel. It's good. It's good news. And Father, while the world is being inundated with bad news, I've got good news. Is that my God is bigger than any other name, than any other thing. And his big, strong arms are, are, are wrapped around each and every one of us, and we are protected. And when we listen to his voice, he will tell us where to go, what to do, what to say, what, the, the, the things that we need to operate in. So we just yield to you. We yield to your word, and we thank you that though everything be shaken around us, we, living in your kingdom, will not be shaken because we have faith. We have one another. We have authority. We have your name. And goodness gracious, the promises of protection, health, strength, long life is just amazing. 
We love you, Father.